Friday 4000 City app, and we're going to do this every four Saturday, just like before. It all kicks off at 1 p.m. We talk about love, relationships, and it's really nice and cool right now, so I feel really good right this second. So I am Shelly Williams, and I'm just going to pass it down. <laughs> Let's go this way. Catrice Bailey, a model with a model and a mother of three. It's T.C. Colbo, BK, your big homie, Stormy Weathers, the Unsigned Hype Show, Evolve Radio 247.com. Hey. Hi, my name is Dr. D, on the right track with Dr. D. I'm a pastor, uh, entrepreneur, and I'm an author. I'm David Scott, better known as Mr. Goodnight. Uh, I'm a college professor and an advocate for youth. And I am Danielle Patterson, a local attorney, practicing catastrophic loss, personal injury, out here dating, still single, looking, trying to be available, but we know these men ain't ready, willing, and able to handle all, all of this, this right here. That's right. She said, a local attorney, can you handle it? I don't know. But anyway, we are here today. We're talking about a topic. I, you know what? Before talking to you, the only person I heard about as far as uh, sexual disorders, or we're talking about hyposexual disorder, right? Oh, I was right. No, when you say H HSD, I was like, oh, I was like, oh, I was right. I feel good about and, that. And, hey, I was, so <laughs> as I look up, but, but normally we heard sex addiction. Is that the same thing? Is, is hypersexual disorder the same thing as a sex addiction? We only heard that with um, Eric Benet. Eric Benet was married to Holly Berry, and the reason he cheated, supposedly, was because he had a sex addiction. No, we heard about it twice. Who else? Dr. David Pulley told you all about oh, his yeah, sexual Dr. David, addiction. You know, I was thinking uh, general as far as out there in the world, but Dr. David Pulley definitely speaks about it often. But is it the same thing? Is, 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 does that both mean the same thing? Yes. So how does that work? What is, the, what is HSD and how does it refer to you? How do you, how do you refer to it? So HSD on what we call the DSM-5 now um, is particularly, I think, the normal, normal professional name for a nympho or having a sex, being a sex addict. And so being an HSD is hypersexual disorder and, and in alignment to what the topic is about today, being single in today's society as a one, as a woman, two, as a black woman, and three, as someone in leadership in, in, in the church, how do, I how do I manage dealing with all of that at the same time with my diagnosis of being HSD? There is no cure for it. Uh, there is no medication for it, but it's more about you as a person individually, how you carry yourself as a person, and how do you deal with that? So. Wait a minute, I got, just, I got confused, so I just need to make sure I'm in the right context. Yes. Because you said, like, it was started with general, but then right. you started talking about with being a leader in the church. So are we talking about you specifically, that you are diagnosed with this? Me, personally, that's why I'm here today. Okay, yes. well, see, I missed that part. That's why oh. I'm like, wait a minute. I was okay. like, okay, I, doctor something, she gonna talk yes. about it. Then I'm like, wait a minute. Being the leader in church, yeah. Right. Okay. Okay, so you the sex crazed pastor. Got it. Okay. Well, <laughs> you can terminalize, you can term me sex crazed pastor, but that's not who I am. Oh, I I'm, know you're not. I know that you're going to go back to tell HSD. me some more about yes. this. Yes, yes. I know you're going to go back to tell me some more yes. about this. Right. I'm not sex crazed pastor, but I am Dr. Deshaun Williams, who happens to be a pastor who has a diagnosis of HSD. Now, how do I manage that being a single woman in today's society? That's who I am. Well, I have a question for, um, sure. so when you talk, I, I listening to a uh, doctor on the TV today, yes. her name was Dr. Ross, and she said okay. that, uh, she's a sexologist, and she said that if you, uh, if you don't use it, you lose it. So if you're not, you know, if you're not practicing sex, right? You know, will you lose that whole feeling? Does it? Because you said there's no cure for it. But if you, she said, if you don't use it, you'll lose it. So can you lose it? I think it's all about perspective. Whether I mean, you lose the addiction or lose she, your sexuality. She's saying, she's saying. They said the, the lady said on television. She's a doctor, sexologist. She said if you, that's the, that was just her word. She said if you don't use it, you'll lose it due to atrophy and things like that. So if you can lose it, doesn't that mean that you could? There is a cure possibly for. Well, I, I don't. I mean, I don't know in detail the context of her reasoning or why she said, "If you don't use it, you'll lose it." I'm just thinking, perhaps she's saying, if you don't have sex often, that you'll lose the urge for having sex, and or maybe your vagina might get old and fall out. That's I what don't she know. said. She but said it's <laughs> She said your 
body. So what I'm atrophy. saying is, I think that as women, as women, we know that that you don't have to have sex to have your vagina to be strong. You, I can sit here right now and I could do exercises to enhance the, the strength of my vagina and you won't even know it. So at the end of the day, it's like, it's not about me having to go out and have sex with a man. But you know what I want to, then I want to know what are the symptoms? Because I got to hear this. What's the exactly. Symptoms? I want to hear the symptoms. Well, so what, happens like, is, what happens is um, you, you might, you might in, in urban, urban theology, is call someone a, a thought or a whore or someone who has multiple partners and they just have sex with Tom, Dick, and Harry, right? And so the signs and symptoms of someone who does not have uh, control over that, that diagnosis or, or who has not been diagnosed, because there's a lot of women in this room right now, three out of four people in this room, is hypersexual, have a hypersexual disorder. A sexaholic. But, but, but have not been diagnosed. And what happens is some women in society, they don't know how to control it, so they're having these multiple relationships with these multiple men who then they don't value themselves sometimes, and sometimes it gets them in situations that they can't find them to get themselves out so of. Is it an can't. urge, a desire? Is it, it is, is this something? Urge. It is a is, desire. Is, 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 is your vagina throbbing saying, I need something? I want to know <laughs> what are the legitimate symptoms. Well, it's it's a combination of it's a combination of many things. Yes, you you I'm can too. you you know, I mean listen, I'm between Mr. Good Goodnight. Night. And storm. That's good. Good night, storm. Right. Amen. So, <laughs> listen, uh -oh. I'm done with looking for Mr. Goodbar, all right? So, I got the good night and I got the storm. But it, that doesn't mean my vagina is pulsating because pul pul I'm sitting next to y'all. It's a, it's, a, it's a combination of many things. It's a thought process. That's what I it's a, get at. But who, who, uh, who determines because someone likes to have sex more than another person, an illness? Well, no, wait, it's, just she, a, it just may right. be the fact that they just like to have sex. Sex. And who to say that they have low self-esteem because they like to have sex? I think that's the issue. Like, if somebody have low self-esteem, that may be the issue. But because what I want to do sexually, to me, it, it's not an addiction right. or anything. It's just that, you know, sometimes I'll say I, I, I'm more sexually active after the age of 40 than I was when I was younger. And I don't think it's an addiction. <laughs> wow, I just think... Like, oh, 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 but, but going back to what but, you're saying, I think it's important that you be reminded. I never said it was about low self-esteem. and I never At said, one point you said something. You said it's about her self-esteem. Because that's what caught my... No, I my, said that some people have the perception that it's about you having low self-esteem. I'm not saying okay, sir, to okay, me personally, right. It's, yeah. it's, you know, what, what, effective what, listening is imperative mm -hmm. because what happens is, and, not, and I'm not trying to say I'm throwing shade. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, it's very, it. what I'm saying is very <laughs> important that we understand that when we're on a platform like this, that we articulate what it is that we're saying so that we understand what is being projected. Because people can walk away feeling like, well, dang, I like to have sex. Like you said, after 40, my, my sex libido went up. And so, does that mean I have low self-esteem? No, that no, doesn't mean. No, I'm not mean, saying that it's low right. self-esteem, but it's like who are who who is that person to judge me because I like. Oh, to, it depends. Like, on if the I want to do it, breakfast, yeah. lunch, and dinner. Then do like, it, baby. Who who is to say I have an addiction? You know what I'm right. saying? Right. No, we're gonna back. Let's go to a break. We're gonna go to a break. Let's come back. We address that issue. But Single on Saturday it's night. It's contextual. It depends on your content. Single on Saturday night. Every fourth Saturday at TGI Fridays. When we come back, we're going to dig deep into that. Am I a sexaholic? Am I a HSD? What, what is it? Diagnosed status? What's the symptoms? We'll be right back. Hey, everybody. It's your girl, Shelly Shell Williams, Phyllis Oprah, right here on the set of Single on a Saturday Night. And I have a special guest who came all the way from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, to tell us about his products. Introduce yourself. My name is Raquan Dotson. I'm 20 years old. I'm the CEO and, and owner of Pure and Sexy Lip Cosmetic and Rasha Beauty Bar. I sell hair, makeup, mink lashes, anything beauty, we got it. We're a one-stop shop. You can come see us at 1082 Main Street, Baker, Louisiana, 70714. You can follow us on Instagram at Pure and Sexy Lip Cosmetic. All right, so we're going to tell us what you have today. So we're talking about lashes, not just lip cosmetics, but these are lashes. I messed yeah. up. These are lashes, right? How does this work? Um, we we don't sell just lip cosmetic. We sell mink eyelashes. We got all different shapes, all different sizes. If you like dramatic, if you like 
thin. If you want something just on the natural side, just want to go out and be with your family or something, you can come in and shop and get your Pure Sex and Lip Cosmetic Mink Lashes, Pretty Girl Mink Lashes. All right, so what else do you have? I see you have some hair. Yeah. Let's do the hair real quick. So you get to feel feel the hair before you buy it. So if you if you's out vending or if you at one of the sal at the salon, at right? The you salon. can you can feel. Oh well, this is nice. Uh, what type of hair is it? This all virgin bundle hair. This is our deep wave. I don't, this is our deep wave. This is my about my favorite hair that we have. Deep wave is your favorite. Yeah, deep wave and the kinky curly is my favorite because this one is my kinky curly right here. This one plays more as a real texture with your hair, as your natural hair with the 4C curl and everything. Very soft. It could be dyed. It could be bleached. It could be permed. And where do you get it from again? Pure and sexy lip cosmetic. On Instagram? On Instagram, Facebook, the, you can call us, text us, anywhere you want. We come to you, wherever you at, we can come to you, you come to us, it doesn't matter. We do makeup, we do hair, all of it. Alright, so something else you have is, what is this? This, this is our Sammy Straight Silky Edge Control. Alright, so sometimes between my visits to Lotus Beauty Spa, I need to really get my hair done, but I waited too long, so I might need a little bit of edge control. Can you help me out with my edges? See, I'm playing myself out on this. That's that new growth, but I'm going back. Like I said, sometimes I wait in between and I need to get my hair done. So it just slip my edges so it looks good. How's it look? They look, they look good to me. If I would have had a comb, I would have had them swimming. Oh, good word. If I would have had, had them swimming. All right, so you can get this from you as well at um, Pure and Sexy Lip Cosmetic. Thank you so much. Um, once again, tell them again. Pure and Sexy Lip Cosmetic. Follow us on Instagram, follow us on Facebook, follow us on any social media. You can follow myself on my personal page, y.k.quan. You can put your order in through a DM. You can call me, you can text me. Just, it doesn't matter. Thank you so much. He, like I said, he came all the way from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, checking out my friend, my homie from back in the day, Terrence Stone. Check out his music. Check him out right now. Go check out his Instagram. I am Terrence Stone. His music is out right now. So we're going to get back to sing on a Saturday night. They're doing some karaoke. But my edges feel real good right now. They sure do. <laughs> hey, welcome back to Single on a Saturday night. That is DJ Smooth. We are right here. TGI Friday, 4,000 City Ave. DJ Smooth, you heard him again? DJ Smooth, 4,000 City Ave. He is here every Wednesday for Karaoke Wednesdays. Can I kick it? Yes, you can. That's what he does every Wednesday, <laughs> 8 o'clock p.m. at TGI Fridays, 4000 City Ave. Shout out to AlvinaStyles.com for the bling. And Rashina Stewart, that is a Lotus Beauty Spa, the all-new Lotus Beauty Spa, full-service salon, offering great weave, great hair. So anyway, we're, we're talking about HSD, that is hyposexual disorder, and and. It is being, it is a diagnosis. It's, you know, maybe someone hasn't been diagnosed, but our very own David Pulley, uh, what's his name, Eric Benet, it is a thing. And we just went to the book signing of Jennifer Lewis, who also speaks about it in her book about the sexual disorder. So you were saying something. Uh, I, I just had a question, um, and I just want to focus on a woman more. Um, before I lost my virginity, I read this article that said that most women aren't sexually satisfied, right? And doctor, you said that um, there's a lot of women who are walking around out here who could be diagnosed with that, but they don't know it, right? They could be diagnosed with the condition you were talking about. Do you think that them not being sexually satisfied has something to do with that? Um, again, it's always contextual. It depends on the person's context and how they view their sex life. I think that um, for 
for me personally, I got my own diagnosis by going through counseling and just addressing the challenges that was in my life personally. For someone else, if they're not sexually satisfied, it's contingent upon their own experience. I, again, it depends on who they, how they see themselves, or view themselves. If they're not satisfied, they want to have sex with somebody else multiple times. I can't, de I can't determine that for her. Would you say, all right, but in your opinion, would you say that somebody who is uh, diagnosed with that can eventually find somebody who may be just as sex crazy as them? Because you know, as a man, I can admit I'm addicted to sex. So you know what I mean? Like, do you think that there's a, a potential for like a woman? to find somebody to actually end up being with who's just as sexually, I don't know. Perhaps, I don't know. It's, it's, it's contingent upon their experience. I don't know. It's not It's not to say I'm going to seek and find who's going to be sexually compatible to me because people have to understand sex is, is not about you personally. It's about you pleasing that other person. Exactly. So you wanting to be satisfied, it depends on, again, the context of your experience. With, the, with being diagnosed that way, was it also that a part of it was to have multiple partners or could you be that way within the own time frames of your own relationship? I think it's a combination of many things and for some people it could be both. I know from my experience it was more so when I was married for 14 years I knew that within my own marriage that I wanted more and more and more which caused a breakdown in our relationship because it was like I didn't understand that you know the human male body can only perform to an certain extent so for me it was like I want more and more and more and so and so what happens is well, again, whether it's scientific or not, my experience is my own context. So for within my experience, it was a breakdown in our relationship. And so I began to realize, well, maybe there's something that I need to figure out. Why, why is it that I need more of this? Not saying I'm not satisfied. It's just that I needed more. And so going to seek that assistance and that help is where I where I learned and discovered that I was in what they call a DSM-5, you have hypersexual disorder, and, and how, do I, how do I work through that? How do I accept and embrace this without you know, feeling shamed or feeling like I'm gonna go out here and have sex with multiple men and be a thought or a whore or a slut, but with my own husband at this the time. This is the first time you're admitting this in public to people. To people, so my family contacts This is the first now, time, yeah. so you know, it, is it it's a difficult thing? Are you coming from the, like you said, that you don't want to feel ashamed of it, but is it, what makes this difficult to come out and say? Because you've never said this in public well, before. Well, I think my inner circle knows of my diagnosis, but to come on a public platform like this, no, I'm not ashamed at all. I am, I'm in the field of mental health. I've been a social worker, clinical licensed social worker for over 15 years. So I, I've worked with people. I can see the signs and symptoms of various uh, illnesses, but when it when it's you personally, it's how you receive it, how you accept it, and how do you portray that. So I'm very transparent. So I don't have a problem expressing uh, the fact that I do have HSC. So can I ask, as I have an extensive mental health background also, so my question is, because of the, the demographic, the dynamic that I work with in general, outside of entertainment, does this fall under the neurological, psychological, or physiological axis of where it de where it's derived. It could it could be on all three axioms. It can be on all three axioms. Yes, you're absolutely right. And so you do have people that are doing uh, scientific research, that's doing different um, surveys and questionnaires to find that answer. And so you're absolutely right. It can fall on all three axioms. I like another. Well, we're gonna we're gonna find out more. We're gonna go to mm -hmm. a break right now. Single on a Saturday night right here at TGI Friday, 4000 City Ave. We do this every four Saturday, and you are welcome to join us. It all starts at 1 o'clock. We thank everyone here for joining us. We're going to come back with more of Dr. D on the right track. Thank you. We are back right here, single on a Saturday night, right here at TGI Friday, 4000 City Ave. We do this every four Saturday, and we are talking about hypersexual disorder, some people call it sex addict, whatever it is, this isn't what we're talking about. But I think we have a question from the audience. Hello, good afternoon everyone. My name is Brittany. Hi, and my Brittany. question is, what is the treatment for HSD? Um, you described what it is, but what is the actual treatment? Is it ongoing? Is it a short-term treatment, long-term treatment? Thank you. I think once you once you as the individual understand your own experience and your own context as this therapist so eloquently said about how it can interfere with your life 
And as I was answering his question, he asked me, well, when did you know that you had this, this, this challenge? And I said, and when I was married, I realized that it was taking over my life. I wasn't working. I just need to have sex all the time. My ex-husband and I were going through a lot of arguments. So I said, I, need, I know it's something deeper than this. And so I went to a therapist. And going through the exercises and the assessments, I was diagnosed with HSD. And so I go to therapy every Thursday downtown with a group of other people that's funny, we're cool, we have fun, and we talk about it. And it's more about therapeutic approaches, um, self-talk, um, self-imagery in terms of, you know, when I get to a place being single, being a pastor in the church, being single, because you got to deal with that too, you know, that whole piece, being single and saying to myself, my faithful God, you know, just meditating and, and being being real with who I am, knowing I have these urges, knowing I have uh, HSD, but still staying grounded in my faith and believing that as God will send the next person for me and hopefully he'll be ready to, you know. So when we're talking about we here listening. You have an audience now. You put yes. it out there. People are familiar with HSD now. Mm -hmm. What is it that we need to know so others don't use that as an excuse to cheat and say, well, I have an addiction. Or I have this. How can we secure ourselves from people potentially using that as an excuse in their own relationships? What do they need to know? How can... I mean, people People are people, and people come with their own experiences. And so I can't say to someone how they will know, but I can suggest to someone, if you find yourself in a relationship and you need to cheat, then you should not be in that relationship. You need to rethink about what those boundaries are in that relationship. If you find yourself in a relationship and you need more sex and more than what the other partner is giving you, then that's a conversation you should have with that partner and kind of, kind of flush out, pull back the layers of the onion and say, listen, I need more sex, more than usual. It's interfering with my lifestyle. It's interfering with us. Perhaps I may be dealing with something more than what it is. And so maybe you want to go seek that help if you need to. You don't have to. It's your choice. It's your choice. It's your body. You can have sex as many times as you like. It doesn't mean that you are a, 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 a whore, a thot, or a slut. I'm saying for some people, some people need that label. Some people need that identification to say, now I know what's the issue. Now it makes sense to me. I need to get the therapy. I need to go every week. I need to speak to somebody. Or I just need to have sex. Okay, and Brittany? Okay, to answer your question, um, a lot of problems with getting the treatment that you need is it's very taboo in insurance. And a lot of times insurance will not cover it. There are only four, one, two, three, four sexual addiction clinics in the United States. One of them just happens to be in Chester. But uh, most of them are out Midwest and out on the West Coast very expensive. Treatment runs about $1,500 to $3,000 per day. So that's why a lot of people who may have this disorder, it never goes diagnosed um, or it doesn't get treated because most of us don't have the money that it's going to take and your insurance will give you a very difficult time to uh, cover it. So a lot of people just have therapy or they have group therapy and it's just labeled as therapy but they're really not making it specific so insurance will cover it. Tomorrow. Is it on? How being a pastor, how does that so connect? Yeah, condition? you being a pastor, how does that work with your congregation? If you're preaching and like what we are supposed to think of pastors to be? How does that work for you? I think that's one of the challenges in our society is about how what we think a pastor should be. Okay? Once you take off the title, take off the title, I'm a woman first. Then I'm, I'm, a, I'm a black woman second. Then all the other titles, all the six degrees that I have and the leadership roles that I have, those are just titles that I, I'm positioning myself in. I'm a woman first who was biologically conceived through man and woman, and I'm here today. So I can't, I can't say, oh, because I'm a pastor, I'm not going to have these urges. Every pastor, every leader has challenges. The problem with the leaders is not admitting that they got the problem, preaching from a pulpit, stating that, well, you're going to die and go to hell because you're doing this and doing that when you are dealing with that very issue yourself preaching every Sunday so I'm not going to get up there and lie to my congregation I was very transparent when I told my congregation I'm getting a divorce I'm not going to be the first, I won't be the last 
I told my, my, my congregation even then, I said, pray for me. I said, pastor has gone from being married for 14 years. It's harder coming off of a marriage, going into single life, not having sex. That's hard. So I said, pray for me. Y'all, the men, they smelling good. They, the fat ones look juicy. The tall ones look tall. And I said, you got to pray for pastor. You know, and when I see a fine looking man, I said, now unto him that is able to keep me from falling. <laughs> I, I internalized this. I had to tell myself, listen, ba ba listen, sir, you smell good. You look good. You are a fine specimen. God created you from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. But I'm going to need you to slide on over because my, my heart ain't right. You have to be honest with who you are. So it's the problem I have with my colleagues, they're not honest. They're not honest. You know, I tell a lot of pastors, now you out here preaching and teaching to these people about living in sin, but before you was a pastor, you was laying before you was praying. Hey. So, Come on. So that's how I handle that. So when you, I feel like the healthier the leader, the healthier the church. So as a healthy leader, being transparent and being honest, they know, oh, that's pastor. Pastor will tell you. I tell my young folk, baby, are you laying or are you praying? Pastor, no. Are you laying or are you praying? Because you gotta guide them in the right way. And they need to know that their pastor is real. She has issues, she has challenges that she has to face. I need prayer just like you need prayer. All right, so when you meet men, do you have to tell them? Is it, is it, is it something you say uh, when you meet them or do you wait a while, you know what I mean? Say, listen, I, I'm dealing with this. Oh, hi, I'm an HSC. No no, 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 I'm saying, but once you get to know them, do you, is this something you have to say or can you just let it go? And and it, I know who I am as a woman and what I want and I categorize my relationships. So if he is worth knowing after more than six months, then I'll let them know. But some of them don't get that far because they, they're so intimidated by who I am as a person within itself. So I got to contend with that. Oh, my God, you got six degrees. You got two bachelors, two masters. You're working on a second PhD. You got this, you got that. So once that conversation is had within the first two weeks, I cut you off. I cut you off because that tells me that you, you, you already counsel, counseled yourself out. You counseled yourself out. And so I, 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 don't, I don't go out saying this is what I have. You have to build a relationship. And you can't tell everybody everything. But since y'all here today, y'all already know. All yeah, right? yeah, thank hey. you, Michelle. Thank you, Michelle. One, I just had one more question. Where is your church? My church is yeah. at, uh, my church, actually, I am the church, but we're our fellowship, 4400 Germantown <laughs> Avenue, between Germantown and Cayuga, New Inspirational Baptist Church. And so my brother is now the senior pastor. I was pastor for five years, but I'm pastor of evangelism and missions. And so I consider myself a marketplace preacher. So this is my marketplace. So I'm preaching to y'all today. Hey, yes. Right. Doc, oh, thank you so much. Yes. Dr. D on the right track, trying to get you on the right track. Before we go, we're at the end of the show. Um, Dr. Love, he has the book, Three Things Every Woman Needs to Know About a Man. So it is now currently out in stores now. Okay. So before we go, any last words? Well, I appreciate Dr. D. Yes. Absolutely. Thank and you. the bottom line is just not judgment, being judgmental, but the question is, are you whole? And that's the name of the game, being a whole person and being satisfied you where you are, back. with who you are, everything yes. you have in life. So thank you, the book is doing well, and I look forward to interacting with all of you. How much is your book? The book is $20. $20, yes. I wanna buy one and gift it to somebody in the, in the audience if they want a book. Ooh. All right. Go ahead. <laughs> you want a book? Okay, I'm gonna give it to the young lady back there. All right, all right, and we still have Yvette Money, AKA Monica, AKA the, uh, the creator, writer of the, the play, Three Angry, these uh, I don't believe you patiently and and waiting for all us to set it up so you get the tickets I'll give it to you in a moment once we finish but you get to go see three angry bees there you go <laughs> all right right so here we are single on a Saturday night thank you to everyone who helps us put the show together I'm talking about Doc Smitty he is Groove Boy Entertainment and we have Ideal Empire that's JT the genius and of course Howard Gilliam jr. In his absence. He is new video productions He's the one who's going to put it all together and make it look good and cut out anything that didn't look good And didn't look this way. So, you know, he does that for us You know, sometimes he has to cut some things out. So thank you to Howard Gilliam jr. And Alvina styles.com She gives me the bling and Rashina Stewart. She gives me the hair So there you go. I'm all covered all the way around and if you want to hear us you can listen to us every Saturday 1 p.m. on 
Evolve Radio 247.com. You can also listen to us on Global Pinoy Stream every Friday at 10 p.m. And you can watch us every Wednesday, 10.30 p.m. on Comcast 66, Verizon 29. Guess what? There is no excuse for you not to see, hear, or be a part of Single on a Saturday Night. Join us every fourth Saturday at TGI Friday. Because guess what? We're back. We're back. I would like to say the word.